Okay, so this video is going to deal with um, lathe tool issues. Uh, when the I, I use carbide bits on my lathe, so you might just use straight steel bits, which is fine if you're cutting soft materials like brass here. Um, I prefer carbide because it keeps sharper longer. <clears throat> and I don't like to have a lot of time, you know, involved in sharpening the tool. So it's going to, I'm going to deal with sharpening the tool, but I'm going to deal with analyzing when the tool actually needs to be sharpened. Now this one here, this is one of the pieces that I do. And as you can see, it is actually, it's threaded. I've already cut the threads. Okay. And it's a finished piece. Uh, let me see if I can get it to focus here it's a it's a finished piece and the top of it is smooth if I can get it to focus there we go okay top of it is smooth okay and that's the way it should be the, the cut should be nice and clean and when the tool starts to get dull this is already threaded when a tool starts to get dull it appears that there's like these stripes along the, the tool, I mean along the finished piece that you're doing. And that really shouldn't be the case. It should be as smooth as possible. You know, there's a couple of reasons that you can get stripes, like maybe uh, the lathe is moving too smoothly and you're trying to cut too fast, or the lathe is moving too fast, or there's movement at the, at the, <coughs> at the cutting bit. You know, that will sometimes cause it to chatter like that. You know, if you're getting chattering, uh, that could be that you're you're not, you know, the, the tool is not secure and that the uh, the piece is, is moving. So you have to, you know, you're going to have to shim up that, that, uh, that axis. But in this case, what it is, it's uh, actually the tool is getting dull. So you can see the little stripes there along there and along there. So, I'm gonna to need to do a, uh, I'm gonna to need to sharpen a tool, okay? So, the other thing too is that uh, this cut here, you know, when you do a bezel cut like this, that should be the easiest cut that you make. And this bezel cut is, it was a real chore to get it just to this point. I usually like to run the bezel a little bit, like maybe one more pass to get that little flat part as small as possible, but that wasn't possible in this case because of the tool being dull. So I'm gonna go ahead and remedy that. And now I wanted to show you side by side the actual. So if you did a side by side comparison of the good cut, you know, the cut with the tool being okay versus the tool being dull that's what you're going to get so you can see the difference and you know if you look at the bottom here where the shank is I mean that looks like it's threaded but it's not actually not it's just the way that the tool was cutting across the axis there it was actually moving and chattering now what one, one of the things that happens there too is that <clears throat> you know you have to run lubricant when you're cutting pieces typically to keep the tool moving smoothly across the face of the cutting surface and I was uh, I was running lubricant but you know the tool was was pretty dull so I was just trying to do this in a crash bang hurry I probably should have stopped this sh sharpened tool first and uh, do this but I was under deadline I didn't have the proper uh, equipment that I needed to get it sharpened so that's why it turned out like this. And it's going to be good enough for what I'm doing right now, but I've got to get that tool sharpened because I can't continue to cut with it like that. So I'll continue on with this video as time goes on, but I kind of wanted to show you the precursor here. And you can see the vivid difference between the two heads of the tool of the uh, finished piece. Night and day, really. Okay, so here's the bit that's going to be sharpened. Now, one of the things that uh, I mentioned before is that it's a carbide bit. So in case you're not familiar, in case you're an amateur machinist or whatever, uh, 
you know, a carbide is a piece of hardened steel that's mounted onto a piece of mild steel. Uh, you can see the insert right here, okay? Uh, carbide is a really great cutting tool because it'll hold an edge, you know, nice for a long time. However, it is brittle, so instead of just folding over, it'll chip instead. That's what brittle means, okay? So as you can see, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of a nick here. That was one of the things that happened to this tool when I first started using it. That little nick right there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, uh, the tool is put onto the is, the hard part of the tool is put onto the mild steel with an adhesive that's probably you know able to take temperatures of five or six hundred degrees Fahrenheit I'm sure okay uh, now the part of the tool part of this tool that cuts is this edge and this edge tools will vary okay I have kind of a I kind of have a guide of some of the tools now these are common tools that you're going to find in a home machinist's workshop some tools actually have a relief where it makes it more efficient. There's a lifted edge here, and then there's a dugout portion, and it it's designed that way so that it can cut more efficiently at high speed with high speed lathes. But you know, this is this is a home lathe, and typically, you know, you I I don't know if they're if machines or if uh, you know like a machinist business uh, a production lathe is going to sharpen the tools. I doubt that they are. Um, they're probably going to use them one time. They're going to get thrown away after so many cuts. They keep, um, you know, they keep records of the cuts. Uh, so, you know, that this is not the video for them, obviously, okay? This is a video for a backyard machinist like myself, okay? Now, what happened is, like I said, it, this, this edge got dull, and so did the front edge. And it should feel like, you know, you could almost get cut if you were to press your finger on this hard enough. And this edge is, is you know, it's kind of hard to gauge that way, but uh, when you file it down, as I'm doing here, okay, so when you do that, it's going to give it a sharper edge, and it's going to give it the type of edge that I need to be able to cut through the material. And obviously, I'm going to use some lubricant as well to help it along, okay? Uh, cutting tool lubricant is, you know, cutting oil is probably the best stuff that you can use. You can use WD-40. But, you know, if you have a way of spraying it on there, if you're doing high, higher speeds, then you're going to want to, you know, have it introduced as a spray onto, uh, the, onto the actual piece that's being cut, the work. So, you know, so what I do is I use these, these little uh, files here. I, I kind of found this. This is, this is a great little thing here. These have these are diamond impregnated. This is diamond on the surface of this, uh, on the surface of this file. Let me get a better one. Okay, this is a diamond surface. So, you know, the only thing that's going to be harder in carbide steel basically is diamond. So, I use the diamond to sharpen the edge of this. Okay, and the way that I do that is I just take this guy here and I just kind of run it along here. Now, you're not going to be taking a lot off of this edge, but what you're going to be doing is you're going to be, you know, probably, a, it's pro probably not even going to be a tenth, it's going to probably be a hundredth, and I'm talking about a ten thousandth, by the way. Uh, the amount of material that's, that's being removed here is just a very, very slight bit of material, but it's just enough to get an edge to where... That edge is going to be sharp enough to do the right type of cutting job on the material. And typically, I'll, I'll chuck one of these things up. I'll put it in a in a or I'll put it in my vise and then just chuck it up and do it. That way, I don't have any variance in the way that this is actually meeting the material. But for the sake of this video, I'm just showing it being done by hand here. It's kind of you know doesn't take much really. Just a little bit. And like I said, I'm probably getting a tenth, you know, a ten thousandth of an inch, if that. You know, more, more like a hundred thousandth of an inch. That's about what it takes to sharpen this. And now that I've done it, 
I've got a sharper edge. I, I can feel it with my fingers. I've kind of grown accustomed to feeling how how these things are supposed to feel. This this edge is still a little bit needs a little bit of work. Okay, yeah, I can I can feel the difference now. Uh, that edge right there at the top needs a little bit. And I just go along, okay? So, you know, if you have a piece of, of carbide tungsten inserted, uh, or even if it's mild steel, you know, this is a good way to do it. Uh, you know, you, you can go ahead and uh, there's probably other methods that you can use to sharpen them also. But, you know, for the expense, I mean, you're talking a, a diamond impregnated nail file for a buck at the dollar store. That's what I use to sharpen my bits and I, I get quite a bit of tool life out of that once it's sharpened and I could probably of those little orifices that I was showing you those little pieces there you know there's uh, one two uh, three uh, there's yeah there's there's like three cuts on the faces you know the, between the bezel the uh, the shake you know uh, the top of it well four actually because I've got to surface it twice so there's about four cuts and I cut about I usually cut a, a tit 12 to 24 of those each time and I probably of this tool life I probably get about two or three rounds of that so i am able to cut about you know almost a hundred of those tools before this this tool needs to be sharpened probably over a hundred and it, it's enough to sharpen it and keep it that long you know, got to mind my tool speed, you know, got to mind the way it's going, got to mind the direction that the, the bit's cutting. Sometimes, you know, you'll forget and cut it in the wrong direction. It'll cause it to chatter and it'll, it might cause that edge to become dulled. So as long as you're behaving and you're doing the, t using the tool the way it's supposed to be used, then, uh, you know, you're going to see some tool life out of it. But if not, good old diamond impregnated nail file from the dollar store for a buck so that's it for the video I hope you hope you learned something thanks for watching okay here's an epilogue to that video so what's happening is this tool is chattering on this piece here okay so I did sharpen the tool and it, it did need to be sharpened because it was a little bit dull but that, is, that wasn't the reason for the chattering. Like I said, there could be a number of things that causes the chattering. I go in about 10 thousandths on each cut. So, you know, cut 10 thousandths each time. What the real source is, what the source of this chattering is, is that I've already shimmed this. I start, I, I shim this from the start with, uh, with some shim stock. Now, you can use shim stock, you know, brass shim stock, because you can get it in sheets that are as, as thick as you specify. Or what I do is have a train going by. Okay, what I do is I uh, I have I use pieces of can. Uh, I, I drink these iced teas. So this can is uh, is I would say probably a, about uh, I don't know probably about eight or ten thousand thick. I did measure it actually. But what I what I use is I use it for the shim to get the movement out of out of this. this. This is actually moving a little bit side to side. You can kind of see it there. Okay, you want that movement to be out of there. I mean, there's always going to be movement there, but you want that movement. If it's if it's that obvious, then the movement's pretty bad. What's happening is the when it's when this is cutting. It is causing that to, you know, give give it a downward force, and it's moving this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shim this a little bit more. I might shim it on the other side just to get both rails done, and that should stable out this cutting here, and I shouldn't have that happening anymore. So I just wanted to add that to the video because uh, sometimes it's the problems on lays are not the most obvious things. Sometimes it's just a little subtle thing like that. And I've had this shim for quite some time. This shim has been uh, pretty well used, you know. But uh, it seems that it's gotten a little bit looser over time. So now it's time to shim it again. You know, you gotta you gotta check these things every once in a while. 
align them, make sure that everything is square, you know, all the things that you have to do on a lathe. So I just wanted to point that out on this video here, that that's going to be the fix for the, uh, for the chattering problem that I have with this lathe. All right, thanks for watching. Oh yes, I did, sh I did measure this. Uh, this shim stock here is one and a half thousandths. Now, you can get shim stock as thin or as thick as you want. Like I said, normally it's done in brass. I'm doing it in aluminum, which is, you know, from that can. Now, this is actually going to shrimp, shrink and expand, you know, with the heat as well. So, uh, you have to keep that in mind when you're shimming something. Especially in a, with a metal that's, uh, that tends to grow and shrink with the heat, you know, with the ambient heat. But, uh, yeah, one and a half ten thousandths. Or, I'm sorry, one and a half thousandths. So... Uh, I'm going to add another piece because it's going to take that for sure, and that should solve the problem with this with this uh, tool moving. Thanks for watching.